I don't even know if I want to go to college I just quit my job If you're obliged to me Hello and welcome to an episode of Tamron in a Tree. So this is kind of like my crib. I always told myself, you know, if life doesn't work out, I can always come and live in this tree. Guess where we are, folks. I kid, but I mean, it actually would be pretty cool. Although this platform is still unstable and it keeps creaking and making crunching noises. So if I fall, send help. My thought process for why I should do this video in a tree was kind of like, it would be weird if I didn't do it in a tree, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's also partially because there are people in my house and, um, uh, I'm not comfortable recording around people at all. I turn my voice down so much. I feel like a scared little 12 year old trying to film. It's not a good look for me. So I was like, you know what? Let's get to the outdoors. Let's get some uh, some cloud. I guess there is no sun at the moment. Yeah, it may actually rain just now. So let me let me get into this. This is my advice. I went on a gap year on February the 1st. I left South Africa, went to London. I actually stayed with some family friends for weeks. I worked in a bar for a bit, made some money. Then I went straight into an au pair job in Luxembourg. Luxembourg, 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 the city Luxembourg, within the country Luxembourg, and worked there for seven months until August. But during that time, because Luxembourg is so central, I got to travel a lot around Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, France. Could just do a weekend trip, it was really nice. And then I got summer off, so like six weeks off, and I went everywhere around Europe, majority of the places around Europe. And then I went to Ireland and stayed with a friend for a bit after the au pair job. So I got to see Ireland, which is cool. Actually, only like the very southern, southern, southern part, like Kinsale, uh, Cork area, but I'm counting it. And then I went and worked in London for a bit. And then I went to Russia with my best friend, Mary. So I got to do a lot of traveling, as I'm sure you can tell. I spent a very good portion of my time um, on public transport, I would say. But I found that was when I was happiest, like tra when I was traveling, I did not have any anxiety. I was so chilled. I was so happy. I wasn't scared for the future. I was just having a good time. So I did a lot of it. So I thought I might as well do a video about it and share some stuff because I got all the stuff in my brain and I don't know what to do with it. So I might as well regurgitate it to you and you can take it and do something with it or just throw it away. I, uh, I don't care. So I do want to emphasize I have not been to places like Australia, the US, Canada or Asia. So if you're planning to travel to those places, this advice may or may not apply. This year I'm aiming for Southeast Asia and maybe Japan, which would be so sick. I'm still obviously getting around. I haven't traveled the entire world, so I can't give advice for every individual place, but I'm just gonna give some general European really gap year advice. Even if it's not a gap year, even if it's just do something with this, please. Someone use it. So I've got this notebook which I jotted my ideas down in because my memory is shit. We're gonna do this step by step. Obviously, the very first place we start is actually the decision to take this time off or this gap year. I already knew what I wanted to study when I was in like grade 10. So this wasn't an indecision on my part. I know a lot of people take the gap year when they're not sure what they want to do. And I think that is amazing. You should do that. If you don't know what you want to do in life, don't just go do a business degree. Take this year off. Do something valuable or worthwhile. Do something you're interested in. Um, see the world a bit and then take the business degree if you still want to do that, if you're still not certain. But like, don't feel pressured to go straight into university. A lot of people feel very pressured from parents, from friends, from school. Luckily, my parents were very supportive of my decision, but I know a lot of friends who were not encouraged at all in fact were basically forbidden from taking a gap year and I think that's very restricting and unfair if you want to do it like do it if you're not certain what you want to do with your life this is the best way to find yourself if you will sorry that caused me to cringe but it's true it really is true and I mean like me like even if you know what you want to do but you still want to see the world a bit like do it you're not gonna get this time back when you are young and you have zero responsibilities you can just do whatever you want the world is your oyster disregard money for a moment we'll get to that but seriously you are young this is the only time you have when you're older when you're out of uni you're gonna want to go straight into work you're gonna find someone you maybe want to be with maybe you'll have kids maybe you won't but the responsibilities will add on you'll get pets you'll get something that in a good way holds you in one place although that is a part of life and it is a good thing you kind of want to take advantage of your youth and your freedom and do something with it because I know a lot of people who regretted not doing it and I cannot tell you the number of messages I got from people who either I didn't know or I wasn't even friends with just like asking how my life was because they were so intrigued like they're living vicariously through me and they were like oh I'm so jealous I wish I could be doing what you're doing mate you you could like don't be that person who's like oh I'm so jealous I wish I could be doing that and then you don't do anything about it like you can do it so just do it that sounded a bit false it was a harsh tone but you got what I meant 
Then we got planning and saving. Obviously, this is very self-explanatory. You need to plan ahead. I mean, I plan so much and I don't think any of it happened, but it is good to still have that plan, that vague idea, do some research into what you're interested in. Like, oh, I really want to see some tropical climates. Let me think about Southeast Asia. Let me think about um, Southern Europe, Greece, Hungary think about what you're kind of aiming for think about where you want to go in the world i do recommend if you have like contacts like family friends family someone who you know in one place in the world which is far away from you i recommend maybe making use of that contact either just for advice or maybe you can go stay with them for a bit it's really helpful to have that like launch pad it helps you adjust they'll help you show you around stuff like that you know you'll get something out of it i mean i did that with some family friends it was really helpful for me it helped me adapt a lot to how everything works but it is still so possible to just go someplace where you've never been before you don't know anyone there and just make it work it's so easy i kind of did that with luxembourg okay it's not easy it's not super easy it is so possible fuck my battery's gonna die my battery's all the way up there 200 meters away why are you doing this to me let's get as much done as we can and then i'll go fetch my battery okay and then obviously saving so i would recommend either getting a job during school like doing getting a part-time job part-time job saving up some money or maybe like what i did i spent about a month and a half two months working in a bar before i left so i had some savings you have that cushion which can help support you when you get overseas a lot of the time you're not just gonna go straight into a job that's paying you you're gonna need some sort of like money to keep you alive before you go overseas try arrange a job for the first time you're doing it like I would sometimes after the first time I would go places and then find a job to give yourself some more like comfort and your family as well so they're not just sending you into the unknown with into the abyss rather try organize a job beforehand so you just you know what you're getting into and a lot of people who don't do that and then they basically just end up on the streets like I met this girl from Croatia she was literally basically living off the streets in London and it was scary we actually follow each other on Instagram now but you don't really want to end up in that situation it is scary and it just kind of takes the fun out of traveling obviously I can give some advice for jobs you can do now these ones I'm recommending are mostly just ones that offer you accommodation as well because that's kind of what I would recommend aiming for initially because then all the money is just kind of going in your back pocket you're kind of free to do what you want you know you're not having to worry about paying for like rent that kind of stressful stuff there's obviously au pair the most common one I think is Au Pair World. That's what I use. This Au Pair World and GreatAuPair.com. I'll link them below. They're both very reliable. Both of them I think want you to pay, but I'll tell you a secret how you don't have to pay. I'm back. Sweatier than ever. Oh my god. I have tree juice on my ass. So technically you have to pay it to be able to message them but you can like the family for free and by clicking like on their profile they'll see that you've liked them and if they're interested in you they'll reach out to you i got like five or six offers by doing that within a week they're gonna offer you a contract if they're interested make sure you do skype or something like make sure you're comfortable with the situation you've spoke to the people you've seen that they're real but don't get kidnapped or human trafficked please when they send you the contract read through it thoroughly make sure you are happy with everything in there if there's something you don't understand query it. if there's something you're not happy with try change it to something that suits you because obviously you're gonna be stuck in this situation not stuck you're gonna be living in this situation and you want to make it as good for you as possible and if there's something that you thought oh, I'll just deal with it in the beginning you know you didn't ask to change it could very likely affect your happiness and you don't want that to happen don't worry about being rude or seeming pushy or anything like that like seriously don't I am very much a people pleaser so I completely get that aspect of being like oh no of course it's fine everything's fine everything's fine but like seriously consider your own happiness with that make sure if you need to get out of it you can if you get there and it's not what you expected it's not what you wanted you're not comfortable there you're not happy there make sure you're able to leave like sure you may have to give like two months notice uh, two weeks notice or something like that make sure you're able to do that it's not like binding like you are stuck there for a year kind of thing so there, there's all pairing there's also like short-term kind of things or i guess they could turn into long-term things like woofing not barking like a dog it's so funny diamond working on organic farms there's a whole site about it i think it's literally called woof or woofing i'll try find the link and put it down below self-explanatory you work on an organic farm you get food you get accommodation and it's just a voluntary basis i don't think you get paid for it i 
stand to be corrected you may be paid on certain farms but most of the ones i know it's just voluntary a nice thing to do when traveling for accommodation that kind of thing you know it's not touristy you get to meet some cool people you get to do some physical labor get fit get a tan i think it's it would be quite an interesting experience i really want to do that sometime there's also volunteering so there's like volunteering and there's like paying to volunteer uh, which tends to be more of the trend like i think you have to pay like 200 pounds to volunteer somewhere for two weeks for example working in Greece with sea turtles and working in Thailand with the wildlife there at an elephant sanctuary or something like that so depending on what you want like you may want to save up a bit and then do that volunteering because I think it will be really rewarding I wanted to volunteer at an elephant sanctuary when I go to Thailand that is kind of a vague plan so it just depends if it's something you're really interested in like maybe worth paying for and with that you should get free accommodation and free food so I guess that's kind of what you're paying for and your time with the animals and you just kind of work there help out you get volunteering obviously where you don't have to pay it's free and I think most of those kind of places you can find on a site called workaway.com link that down below too I'll link everything down below just expect it to be down there this is gonna be so much work for me <laughs> so lazy yeah work away you don't pay it's just pure volunteering which you should get free food, free accommodation. Also really nice, great way to travel and get free accommodation as well as kind of give back, do something different. I think it's a really nice way to meet, li meet like-minded people. Everyone who's there is pretty generous, will have probably some sort of similar interests, especially if it's something like, you know, wildlife or something like that. You're not gonna go there if you're terrified of a mouse. A very big factor within traveling is making connections and meeting people. Like, that is one of the my favorite things about traveling is you always get to meet so many interesting people some of them are assholes some of them are really dumb some of them are great and so intelligent and you just talk really late into the night and have a great time you learn something from everyone no matter how weird or off-putting they may be you'll learn something from everyone around you it's great i'm getting off track you can also do hostel work there are a bunch of websites um i'll link some of them that i know are reputable down below so you can work in a hostel i think it's it's basically a work exchange you'll like you know you'll help clean up you'll help do check-in for guests you'll change linen you'll do that kind of stuff again free food free accommodation definitely worth it i would say if you have certain skills hostels will pay you for those so you know you kind of just have to do a bit of research do some digging and see whether you would have to do it on a work exchange basis which is basically exchanging accommodation and food for your time or they may pay for it then obviously there's resort work so during the summer months it probably be like in places like Greece and stuff like that obviously a very big sector is ski resort working which I think is also another really good way to make friends and also free food free accommodation and you get paid for it it's more of a pocket money thing so always expect if you're getting free food and free accommodation or as well with preparing you're not going to be getting minimum wage you're going to be getting much less than minimum wage. Um, what they term it is pocket money. But it's still going to be a decent amount. Like try to find yourself a decent work placement. Don't settle for like 200 euros a month. Try aim for, I mean I was getting, I'm going to be completely open about it. With my old pairing I was getting 450 euros a month which was just going into my back pocket and that's actually pretty decent for old pairing. I know in the US they actually pay you a lot more if you're old pairing. So you may want to look into that. Europe is pretty shit. I mean, I know like I was initially looking for Paris and they're paying like 280 euros a month. Like that is not sustainable. You're not like the cost of living in Paris is so expensive. Like just like getting around and going out for a, some food or something like it's so insanely expensive. You're not going to have any money saved up. So yeah, definitely try get yourself a decent wage. Same with ski resort work. It'll be roughly the same prices because I was looking into it as well. Don't undersell yourself make sure you get something where you're actually going to be able to you know garner some decent savings so you don't get stuck in one place and you're not able to do what you want to do and then there's also boarding school which is like you basically work at a boarding school this is very popular in the uk and in australia i know they do it in europe as well but it's not as popular and i think you obviously have to be able to speak that language if you're fluent in another language that is european good for you but if you're not i would recommend looking into australia or the uk uk is probably better because obviously there's europe right next door and you can just go travel for a really decent price I mean yeah Australia as well I guess you could go towards Asia and stuff like that again depends on your interests depends on you it's all like subjective but yeah boarding school work I think it's basically a year contract that you have to sign up for I think you can choose certain periods of time like you can do it for a semester six months a year kind of thing and they give you free food free accommodation and pay for your time I think you'll either be like a classroom assistant like helping tidy up keep things clean doing office work photocopying etc helping out with
about sports, if you're really good at sports or something, you could help be like a, a second coach or like an assistant coach or something like that. And then I think you also work within the boarding house, like border assistants, so like keep them in line, keeping the boarding house tidy, stuff like that. It just depends from place to place what your job description would be, but it, it'll be something along those lines. You actually get very decent pay for it. And then obviously whenever it's the kids' holidays, you have holidays off, so you can just go traveling then. Um, so I think that's also a really good thing to look into. You have to plan it quite far ahead though. So I think you have to, six months before you want to do it, you kind of have to book yourself in there. Because I wanted to do it through, halfway through my last year of school. I was like, oh, I want to do it. And by then it was already too late. So that was kind of unfortunate. I kind of mixed up the jobs and the volunteering in there. I'm sorry. So to recap, like actual jobs that you can get paid for, or pairing potentially hostile work that could be paid could not be paid resort work working in a boarding house and then volunteering you can do woofing you could pay to volunteer and you could just do something voluntarily without having to pay okay now we're getting to transport this is what you're going to be spending so much of your life doing traveling on public transport i actually really like traveling now like seriously when i hear that something's like 12 hours away i'm like cool let's do it like it just seems so manageable once again emphasizing this is strictly europe i don't know how traveling works anywhere else except europe so buses i recommend the app or site get the app though it's easier but there's also the site called flixbus flixbus goes everywhere it takes a very long time to get where you want to go probably get there a third of the time by train but it is incredibly cheap the seats are comfortable it's pretty spacious you have charging ports it's decent it's fine they also have wi-fi on board most of them sometimes it doesn't work but 90 percent of the time it actually does work it's pretty reliable i mean it makes a long journey manageable brace yourself for roughly nine hours of travel just estimating here who knows where you want to go but the average seems to be about nine hours of a bus uh, it sounds long now you It'll be fine and they have a bunch of stops and you go to the toilet get food stuff like that it's a really good system so i definitely recommend flixbus i've used that a lot if you're flying by plane you maybe use the app skyscanner because skyscanner shows you the cheapest flights so it will include all the airlines and compare all the prices for you and show you which airline has the cheapest flights for when you want to go and to where you want to go normally ryanair and easyjet are the cheapest so i would recommend if you're going to fly fly with those because they're both budget airlines and they're they're both pretty good and they're the most popular and I would say most safe and well-known budget airlines. Also Wizz Air isn't bad. I think Wizz Air is Hungarian. They're the ones who took me to Russia so I don't know much about them but they were cool. They were nice. Okay if you're traveling by train, if this is like you're planning, you've planned this whole big trip, if you're traveling for like two weeks to two months I would say across a whole bunch of countries, get an interrail or a Eurail ticket. Interrail ticket is if you have a European or British passport and then Eurail is if you're an international person traveling. Basically they do the exact same thing just make sure you don't you know get one when you meant to have the other because it could cause complications with passports and stuff what I did is I got a two-month one but I could select the days I wanted to travel and you don't have to select beforehand you just right in there as you get on the train like what the date is and someone will check it and be like cool <laughs> that's basically it so I highly recommend that someone is coming oh my god kill me oh my god this is the most awkward thing holy shit like a solid five minutes like i just stood there across the fence smoking kept looking up at me probably thinking why the fuck is this girl just sitting in a tree staring at her notebook trying to recover from that that was very traumatic yeah that's for like long-term travel i would recommend getting an interrail URL pass so many different deals like just look at the site and see which one applies to you and then if you're doing like once off travel there are two apps that you can use uh, or you can either just google it and see what pops up but there's also an app called train line which normally has really good prices gives you a whole bunch of options and there's also omeo and what omeo does is it shows you cheapest options for like flying by train and by bus and i'll show you all three options so that's pretty helpful as well and that's pretty much that with traveling i mean you can also ride by horse just make sure you look after it i don't know where you get it from but just i mean if you have a horse and you want to go traveling like accommodation there are a whole bunch of options with accommodation the most obvious one is hostels i mostly stayed in hostels and i love it so much the app i always use is hostel world oh, by the way none of this is sponsored so kind of unfair for me so hostel world i think it works globally uh, yeah it does work globally it's for anywhere it has ratings reviews all of that for each of the hostels and you can kind of choose whether you want one with like breakfast certain facilities stuff like that you just kind of customize it to yourself there are a whole bunch of filters for you just make sure you read the comments highly recommend read the reviews make sure it has a good rating like don't get yourself in a really awkward situation i've only ever had 
one bad hostel experience. That was when I stayed at one hostel for one night in Russia. My best friend had left, so I was the only one staying there that night. And I was put in a room with only men, old men, <laughs> like not guys my age. I don't know why that makes a difference, but it does. It just seems uncomfortable to me. They were all 35 plus. There were three men and me, a 19 year old girl who apparently looks 16. So I literally couldn't sleep. I would have asked to move. However, they didn't have any ho female hostel staff who would empathize with me. And I was gonna ask the man, the main manager guy, but he was the main perv to be honest. Like he was so creepy. I didn't feel comfortable even talking to him. Like he would always watch me and he was just he made me very uncomfortable and I did not trust him at all I couldn't sleep until I knew that all three men were asleep I stayed up until 3 in the morning unable to sleep and there was nothing I could do it was like minus 20 degrees Celsius outside I had nowhere to go I had to stay there if I really felt threatened like if one of the men had genuinely done something I would have left I would have looked up another hostel and gone I wasn't threatened by any of the men within the room the only man who actually kind of scared me was the manager himself he actually came in at like two o'clock you don't do that okay just no it is not normal for staff to come into the room at 2 a.m and suddenly like mess around with one of the spare beds look at you lying in the bed and then go out like that's not normal that is what made me uncomfortable looking back like i shouldn't have stayed there but i did not feel like packing up at 2 a.m finding a hostel and walking there in the pitch black by myself that seemed even more unsafe I was kind of stuck there. Don't get yourself into a situation like that. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you that things like that can happen. They can be creeps and stuff. But normally, hostels are very good with making sure that if you are in a mixed room, you can choose whether you want to be in a female-only, male-only room or a mixed room. I normally go mixed because it's cheaper and I'm, I normally feel completely comfortable. Like, I've never had a bad experience apart from that one and I've been in tons of hostels and I've met tons of great people that way. Normally, they, have, they make sure that there is a good mix of men and woman they never normally put a girl by herself in a room with just men and if you are put in a room like that don't be like me actually say something say look i don't feel comfortable here please can i move to another room make a deal about it if you feel unsafe because you shouldn't have to deal with that and you don't want anything bad to happen better safe than sorry even if the men turn out to be like okay in the morning one of the men was so sweet he like helped me close my bag basically threw it about a bit bashed it up and got it to close because i was trying to close it for 10 minutes and that was really sweet i was like hey he's not too bad okay it's i, I would have been safe I, I was safe so yeah don't be like me actually say something if you feel uncomfortable that's not to try to put you off hostels because like i said that was one experience within like about 20 30 i don't know how many hostels i've seen in so many they are normally really great normally the the reviews will reflect whether they're safe like what kind of area they're in cleanliness bed bugs be careful of bed bugs if you see one comment about bed bugs that is recent highly recommend avoiding that place uh, you don't want bed bugs you can also get private rooms at hostels if you have the money if you can get private rooms i never really cared to i quite a social person i don't care about sharing my space with others but i understand some people do care about that a lot but this is obviously a cheaper option than hotels and it is a lot safer and a lot nicer than people tend to presume like all the ones i've been in have been really clean really nice hostel staff are really sweet and whenever i get food there it's generally pretty good then if you want your own space or if you have a whole bunch of friends i recommend getting an airbnb obviously airbnb is so well known i'm sure everyone knows what it is basically just get a whole like cottage or apartment or something like that I mean you can just get rooms so you may end up in like family house and just get the room but I normally go for actual like apartments or something especially when it was three of us traveling around Europe my friend Mary and William and myself when we were in Greece we got Airbnbs the whole time and it was so nice because you have your own space when there's a lot of you it just makes more sense it's cost effective I mean it costs just as much as it would have in a hostel but we had our own space I recommend doing that if you are more three or more people or if you have a lot of money to spend on an airbnb a free option is couch surfing it's not as dodgy as it sounds actually but it's basically um, an app i would recommend only choosing people who are verified because it means their details have been checked out they are legit real people Make sure you're comfortable with them read everything about them when you're messaging if something feels off don't do it obviously that goes without saying but just be careful let people know where you're going if you're going by yourself i actually did couch surfing surfing with my friend mary in amsterdam the lady was so so sweet it was really nice so basically you're getting your either free bed or free couch some good company just i think you need to maybe be a little social for this because obviously you're hanging out in someone else's personal space so you have to make them feel comfortable they'll hopefully make you feel comfortable as well yeah you just kind of want to give back to them with your your time really some people do couch surfing offering couch 
surfing, offering a couch in their house, don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like they're like, I'm busy, but I just want to be nice here. Um, at other situations, they want to talk to you. They want a friend, a temporary friend, someone to meet. They like meeting new people, that kind of thing. Um, so you just can't read the situation. Don't be rude. Be nice. Respect their place. That kind of thing. And be safe about it. If I was traveling by myself and doing couch surfing, I would only choose females, just because that's what would make me comfortable. I would not be comfortable staying by myself in a man's house. Just saying. Just personal preference. So if you are a girl and you are traveling alone, I would recommend that. If there are a couple of you, it's probably safer, probably more okay for you to be staying with a man, but just make sure you're comfortable with them. And then if you're looking for a place to actually rent, you're trying to long-term stay somewhere. I'm not sure if it's global, no, it is global, I think. The app is called Spare Room. This is for apartment shares. You're more likely to be able to afford apartment shares as opposed to your own apartment, especially in big cities like London, Rome, Amsterdam, etc. And this app basically just helps connect people looking for flat shares. So you could be sharing with one person, you could be sharing with five people, an apartment or a flat. Yeah, you just find one that suits you and suits your tastes. Another one, I think it's only for the UK. It's called Baddie, B-A-D-I. Uh, that's also another good one for looking for flat shares. Annoyingly though, you can't save the room so you have to request a booking if you want to do it. So I've just been screenshotting it. Very annoying, but anyway, I've been using both of those to try to find a flat share for central London, which I'm so excited about. Oh my God, I'm getting my own flat share. Next thing is food. I highly recommend buying from a supermarket. It works out so much cheaper. Don't just eat out. Often they tailor that kind of thing to tourists, first of all. Second of all, eating out is so expensive, can tend to be pretty unhealthy. You kind of want to keep yourself maybe a little more healthy, depending on what you buy, I guess. If it's just two minute noodles, probably not, but just still cheaper to buy your own food from a supermarket and most hostels I would highly recommend making sure of this before you go to the hostel but almost all hostels have facilities for you to cook in obviously most Airbnbs would to couch surfing as well that being said McDonald's will be your best friend when you are traveling you are likely to be traveling at really strange hours because that's the cheapest so you are going to probably be leaving at like nine at night some places arriving at like 2 3 a.m and you can't check in yet obviously because check-in is only usually at around like 1 or 2 p.m mcdonald's is only the only place that is open 24 7 it will be a haven i'm a vegetarian okay so my options are limited within mcdonald's but uh, you best believe that is the best place ever they have free wi-fi they have charging places they have really good chips yes it's very unhealthy i know i'm aware but it's definitely a safe haven for backpackers and travelers so oh just putting this in there okay so my friend and i had roller wheelie wheel suitcases throughout europe don't recommend it i highly recommend getting a backpack a big bulky backpack instead the suitcases were just difficult i mean okay technically when you get there and you open it up it's easier because then you don't have to if you have a backpack you have to unpack everything to get to stuff whereas with the suitcase you know it's all laid out there it's pretty easy however when there are like little creases in the pavement and little holes and potholes and like my god strange little alleys and stuff you don't want to be going down there with a really heavy 25 kg suitcase it is ungainly really difficult one of my wheels broke once the handle like bent because the thing was so heavy like i just for long-term travel don't recommend another thing if you're going to somewhere and you don't think they'll speak english or you want to learn some phrases of the local language i would recommend obviously duolingo but duolingo is a bit can i tell you what i learned <laughs> okay i know a decent amount of russian now but initially the things that duolingo taught me to say were things like jenny where's the baggage and dad that is not my motor yes if you do duolingo long term you'll probably learn a lot but initially you'll learn some strange things so there's duolingo there's also Babel, and there is triplingo and those three things i think are the highest rated for languages if you just want to learn a couple phrases if you hear something and you want to know what it means if you're looking at a menu obviously there's always google translate as well so there's that but it's not always accurate and now we get to the big finale general big sister advice yes that is my forte i've written down a whole bunch of random shit so we're just going to cover it all bank accounts if you're going somewhere for more than three months and you're staying you're staying somewhere for more than three months i recommend opening a bank account there it just makes more sense you know it just it, it makes more sense you're not going to be paying international costs unless you have already live like say you're from germany and you're going to france or whatever you know you're still working with yours it doesn't make a difference but if you're international i highly recommend i know within the uk 
I opened one with Monzo. So easy, it's like online, it takes 10 minutes, uh, it's free and they send you the card within two weeks. So good. They, they're a bunch of others like Tide and god, I don't know, there's like five of them. But Monzo is the OG and the actual app is so good for like saving and setting money aside and planning it for the future, like it's so good. And then when I was also in Luxembourg, I opened a Luxembourgish account. Also really easy, if you're under 21, you know, you normally get an open account for free because it's like a youth account and you don't normally have to pay interest or anything like that because it's not a credit card you're just yeah it's just a debit card and you're getting money in there it's good stuff and you don't have to pay exchange rates and it's also easier if for your employers to pay you into that account i also highly recommend making friends that sounds so stupid I mean, obviously that's what you're probably gonna try to do, but just make an effort, you know? Like when you're in hostels and you see someone just sitting there, don't be afraid to just look in there and be like, hey, where are you from? I mean, if they don't speak English at all or your language at all, maybe don't do that because then it could just lead to some something awkward. But even if it's just a five minute conversation, you never see them again, I guarantee you'll have learned something. It's really interesting. I've learned so much from random people and just having random conversations. I've met so many strange people, oh my god. It makes it more interesting. It, like, people make life interesting. If it's someone you really get on with, I recommend maintaining that connection. Like, don't just be like, well, I've never seen them again, so who cares? Like, you'd never know. I mean, I met two of my really good friends on a bus in Greece. We like spoke for a bit. We were in, we we're on a bus and then we were on the same train together for a couple hours. And we spoke for like five hours until like 1 a.m. when they had to get off the bu off the train. And we became good friends and I went and visited them where they lived and they gave me a free place to stay for a bit. So that was so cool. And I'm not saying just make friends so you have cool places to stay, but just maintain that connection. It's so cool to have contacts all over the place. It's really helpful as well for you when you're traveling because I mean, if you make friends and then you end up in their hometown you'll have a place maybe to stay or just people to talk to or show you around or something you know just capture the moment <laughs> okay capture the moment but also live in the moment it's quite difficult don't stress about the future so much appreciate traveling just let everything in the future go and enjoy the time that you have to travel at the same time try capture that moment and i mean that either by like journaling about your experience taking some photos doing what i do like recording stuff just something because when you're old and bored and you have nothing to do it'll be so cool to like jog your memory read back or watch or look back or whatever at everything that happened when you were younger everything that you got to see and do but you know spark some memories make life more interesting for the future you know, it's a good way to remember how you felt at the time and you can kind of like live vicariously through your old self be reasonable and safe i kind of said that before with a whole bunch of things but like just be logical about things if it seems dodgy don't do it if if that place doesn't look good, don't do it. If that person seems weird, don't go with them. Like, watch your drinks. I did get spiked once in Luxembourg. Maybe I'll make a story time about it someday. I don't know, but yeah, just be careful. I recommend budgeting, like budget, 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 plan, make thousands of lists if you need to and diagrams and use apps, there are a whole bunch of apps that help you for budgeting and like setting aside money and stuff. Do that <laughs> because you want to make sure you have enough money to sustain you and to get you through all your travels. You don't want to be stuck in some random place with no money and have to call mom and dad and be like, guys, please send me money. If you need to do that, no judgment. Sometimes you're stuck in a situation and you need that help, but try be as independent as possible if you know what I mean. Research how much flights and accommodation all of this is going to cost and then add like a hundred euros onto that for like just in case make sure you're factoring in travel and accommodation and food and all the other stuff that you know you're probably going to be doing like drinks and stuff get used to walking a lot in big cities to get around like you're either gonna cycle or trams or the tube or walking obviously the cheapest most cost effective free option is walking if it's like under an hour and the weather isn't bad do it it's such a good way to see the city while getting to your destination oh that's another thing i didn't actually put it on this list but i'm telling you now okay and take this from someone who got a fine from not doing this always buy a ticket be pedantic about it even if someone tells you oh they don't check don't risk it otherwise you're gonna get a 60 or a fine because we kind of pushed our luck figured people weren't checking we didn't pay don't do that pay for your public transport it's actually really not fair like i thought about it afterwards i was like it's really not fair because you're basically stealing a service it's normally really cheap as well however there are some places like in luxembourg where all public transport is free and therefore don't pay girl guide motto here be prepared cheesy but genuine be prepared for anything be prepared to adapt because your plans aren't always going to go according to plan which can be kind of funny it can be really frustrating it can make you want to scream but not everything's going to go according to plan to so be willing to make quick decisions think about it don't cry or at least cry after you've made a plan if you miss the train immediately think okay when's the next one try find out ask people ask 
people who work there don't just ask random people but if you need to ask random people if you don't know where you're going and your phone's dead so you can't look up directions ask people go into mcdonald's charge your phone for a bit that's another thing always keep your charger on you and power bank the number of times my phone or mary's phone died because our phones both sucked it's really stressful i would recommend getting something like a moon bag or something to keep your money your passports your cards your phone that kind of thing in because you know it's like close to your body it's safer i sound like such a mom right now it makes sense like you don't want to be silly and then lose all your shit in a foreign country and then suddenly have to like try getting your passport and get money and stuff like that's so stressful going back to the budgeting stuff try have a nest egg like i said earlier like always overestimate not so you can spend more money but just overestimate so you have like a nest egg like some money saved up for emergencies that's another part of being prepared just have some money saved up that you weren't planning on spending and if you don't spend it then cool just put it towards the next trip or keep it saved for when you're 50 i don't know allow time for reflection oh boy really bringing out all the cheese now aren't we obviously when you're traveling it can sometimes be overwhelming but you're going to be exposed to so much and you kind of want to process that so allow yourself to reflect think about it that's another thing that generally helps with it helps you process things i found it like I do it a lot but I don't I really should do it more or even if you just sit there for like 10 minutes after the days happen like think about everything that's happened think how it makes you feel reflect and stuff and I think that way you can really be in tune with yourself and see how you're doing because it can be very difficult to actually be aware of your mental state when you're surrounded by so much like you're constantly doing stuff and around people and like all the stuff is happening like lose sight of like how you're doing within yourself allow yourself to adapt don't force yourself to stay who you were before the whole point of traveling also is to evolve become a better person learn more about yourself that kind of thing so if you don't reflect you don't really allow yourself to do that be open-minded this is not saying do drugs okay <laughs> i'm not encouraging that kind of thing but i mean be open-minded to new experiences go out of your comfort zone if it is safe and does not hurt anyone do things you wouldn't normally do if it's safe and doesn't hurt anyone you know the whole purpose also of traveling is to do new things and stuff so explore do cool things go skydiving if you have the money to do it that's so expensive oh my god but if you could go do that and i also mean be open-minded with people like i always used to think i have a type of person that i either want to you know date I have not dated a single person this year, very sad, but you know, like either date or just be friends with. And I think that's quite restrictive. Don't restrict yourself like that. Be open reminded to meet all these different people because there are so many people around you. And I tell you, one of them is interesting and one of them is cool and one of them you'll want to be friends with. Obviously, everyone is going to be from a different background and have different beliefs. So be open minded to that as well. I'm not saying suddenly adopt everything they believe, but just, you know, bring in new ideas to you and whatever feels right to you. You can kind of put that into who you are. That does not make sense. That was not a real sentence that I just said there, but you know what I mean? You, you get it. We're like telepathically connected at this point. We're ending on such an important note. This is probably the most important thing I could bestow upon you. Make sure that you have a good playlist. I'm not joking, okay? Make sure that you have like 40 hours of decent music to keep you motivated okay you don't want to get bored with your music you don't want to just have nothing to do you want to have theme music to keep you going on long bus rides and just in general make sure you have stuff to entertain yourself on all that traveling whether that means friends or a book or you've downloaded movies or series on netflix or you're listening to music staring dramatically out the window thinking how your life is basically a movie at this point do it i'm serious if you're in a really excited happy mood or you're running for a train make sure you've got that good jam going to keep you sprinting that's another thing you will most likely have to run for multiple buses trains planes it's just a way of life it will end up happening make sure you have your inhaler on your body and that's that i feel like there's so much more advice i have and like i could go so much more in depth into all of this i think that's all i have to say for now that's all i could think of in the moment i'll probably think of 10 other things tonight as i fall asleep this was probably so long holy shit but i hope it was worth it for you i hope you gained some insightful knowledge about gap yearing traveling i know there's a whole bunch of like gap year advice videos out there and i didn't watch anyone's because i didn't want it to influence me so i don't know if this is similar to anyone else's or if this is completely unique i did want to go into detail and give specific links specific sites just because i think that's the most helpful i wish i had been given all of this advice instead of having to fumble about and figure it out myself have a great trip i hope it works out if you actually do use this information let me know i would love to know that i've influenced someone's life in a positive manner travel safe kids don't do drugs peace oh my god i'm so sorry bye <laughs>